All right, guys, today I'm going to have a chat to you about symmetry and balance and how you can incorporate that into your designs. Um, and this will be the last of the design principles that I'll be covering with you for our little unit that we're working on. So to begin, um, I'm going to show you three different images. OK, and what I want you to do is um, take it in, process it, and then I want you to decide whether you like image A or image B. OK, um, and it has it, it's pretty much just what you're drawn to. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. So if you're like most people, you probably wrote down more A's than B's, okay? And that's pretty much because as humans, our brains are pretty much wired or naturally drawn to symmetry and balance. Now, symmetry is when um, an object is identical on both sides. So if you remember, um, maybe you were a kid in primary school and you ever put some paint on a page and then you folded it in half and you opened it and it was identical on both sides, um, that's what we call symmetry. Um, all of these logos here, they all use symmetry. If I was to fold this Starbucks logo in half, it would be symmetrical. Same with the Maccas um, and the Audi and even the Snapchat logos. The reason why all of these brands are so recognizable is another cool thing about symmetry is that they're more memorable. So if you are to use symmetry in your designs, you're encouraging the reader to remember it more clearly. However, it's not always realistic to have a symmetrical design. It's just not. So the way that you can combat that is by using balance. And that's what I'll spend a bit of time talking to you about today. So balance is really, really important and you can achieve it in two ways. The first way is by scale, so using size. And the second way is by using color. So if we look at this example here, this font will appear much, much heavier than this font because it takes up more space on the page. It's, I want you to imagine that each element on the page has a figurative or an imaginary weight, okay? So this has a heavier weight than this because it's bolder, its scale is increased. OK, if we have a look at this one, this would have the same weight as these two objects combined, which is why it appears as balanced okay, and almost symmetrical on the page. This, however, does not. If this was a sitting on a seesaw, the one on the left would probably remain upright. The one on the right, I believe, would probably tip down. It just doesn't believe. It just, just is not balanced. OK, I want to look at some more examples with you. So if we have a look here, each of these different elements on this page on the left have got a different weight. OK, so this um, text here, the title has a bit of weight because it's more bold than the one below. All of this here, just due to the sheer scale of all this text, has a bit of weight. Um, and same with this bit of, um, oh, I suppose, these bottles. And at the moment, these aren't balanced. OK, however, if we look at the image on the right, I'm just going to move my little head out of the way. It's now balanced and they've achieved this in a series of ways. OK, firstly, they've offset this text and they've pushed it on either side. OK, secondly, they've put the heavier side of the image on the side with less text. So do you see how this is larger in scale and also the colors are far more intense on this side than this side? So if you, do, if you were to divide this in half, the weight of this as well as the text will probably be equal to this text and the title. And that's how they've balanced it out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a series of designs that either have good balance and symmetry or they don't have good balance and symmetry. So what I want you to do is um, take a mental note, does it or does it not? And then what is the reason for that? So here's your first one. So is this design balanced? Your second one, if you were to divide this in half, would it be balanced? These two here, if you were to divide these in half, would they be balanced? And I might just talk about this one here, okay? So we've got the intense color of red here, which is offset with the red on this side and in his drink, all right? We've got the white here, which is offset with this white. And again, they've matched that and they've done the black on this side and the black in the background. So these things work together to achieve balance and symmetry. One thing that you need to remember um, when you're talking about balance and symmetry and when you start to group things together, you need to be really careful that you're grouping together things that are actually related to each other because otherwise your brain starts to work out, well, why are all these things put together um, if they don't seem to be related? So if you have a look at these six images here, the, these five are of gorgeous Travis Boak, in case you're curious. This is some pretty rubbish footballer who probably plays for the Crows. All right. These aren't related. All right. They're actually not. They play for separate teams. Um, they've got separate positions. There's nothing in common. I've just grouped them all together because I was trying to achieve 
symmetry, okay? But what's happening is I'm looking at these images now and my brain's gone, okay, but how are they connected? Maybe it's because they're all, they were both captains or maybe it is because they're both football players, all right? But that's not the case. So you need to be careful that when you group your objects together, you're making sure that they are related to each other.